Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com, on Roku, Dwyer Boxing, and Sports News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Understand the concept of a hedge fund, right? What you're trying to do, whether it's in the investment world or whether it's in the sports gambling world, is you want to be on both sides of the play, right? If the odds allow it. In other words, you know, you understand going in that some of the bets you make are going to be losing bets. But you have those bets in place just for strategic purposes, right? Just in case something happens. You're there to collect anyway. It's like insurance, only you're trying to profit from the insurance, right? They're outlier events. Think Nassim Taleb. Think fooled by randomness. His entire investment strategy is to bet on outlying events. Because as we found out time and time again, black swans happen, right? Remote events with obscure chances of success, especially in the sports world, come true every now and then, right? Buster Douglas did beat Mike Tyson, right? The USA hockey team did beat the USSR's hockey team in the Olympics, right? These things happen more than we want to believe. Understand, there's uncertainty in the world of gambling. Right? Teams that, after the fact, look like obvious choices weren't before the fact. So, let's turn to basketball. Let me just say this. This is a bet that I believe is going to lose. But in my opinion, it's a losing bet to make. It has to be part of your betting portfolio because the casino here, in my opinion, is giving away value. Now, if you saw Game 6 of the Los Angeles Clipper Houston Rocket series, in particular, if you saw the closing minutes of the third quarter and the entire fourth quarter, you understand that the Houston Rockets, who I personally have ripped here online for months, right? You understand that the Houston Rockets are better than the sum of the parts. In other words, you understand that there's something going on with that team that's above and beyond the talent of the players, right? Some of those guys are just hardcore. They're gamers. They're not buying the hype. They were looking at elimination in game six on the road. They shut down Blake Griffin. They came roaring back. Think about the guys on the court. James Harden was on the bench. Look at the film. Right? The guys on the court were guys like Corey Brewer. Whatever you think of Dwight Howard, Dwight Howard was on the court and he was doing damage in the biggest quarter of the Rockets' season up to that point. Right? The Rockets lose, they're out. They came roaring back from a double-digit deficit to knock off the Clippers. I want you to look at how that series unfolded. The Rockets go on a run. Win the last three games. That's why they're playing now in the Western Conference Finals. Now, the Rockets have holes, right? I'm sure every Rocket fan watching this video wishes Patrick Beverly were available to actually stop Steph Curry, right? Prigioni really isn't a great defender. What happened to Josh Smith's ability to make even free throws, right? Dwight Howard's getting a lot of boards. He's not getting a lot of points. Yes, the Rockets have holes. No question about it. But understand, they just lost game two by one point on the road. Unlike the Atlanta Hawks, the Rockets have yet to lose at home in this series. Right? They still have 
possibly, depending on how the games go, three games at home. Understand, too, unlike the Atlanta Hawks, who just lost Damari Carroll. I understand, excuse me, I understand he might come back. But you know, just common sense tells you that if you hyperextend your knee today, and your boys want to go to the park to play pickup basketball in a couple of days, just common sense tells you that if you make that game, you're not going to be yourself. Right? So the Hawks have some problems. But look at Houston. They don't have the recent injury. Right? Patrick Beverly's been injured for a while. Right? These guys know who they're rolling with right now. Dwight Howard looked like he suffered an injury in game one. Game two, he comes out and gets something like 17 rebounds. So my point to you is this, and I don't fight the tape, right? When I think the Rockets have holes, and then I'm looking at the end of game six against the Clippers, and I'm seeing several minutes of guys sucking it up, firing all the bullets, going for it the whole way, coming back from a double-digit hole on the road to save their season. When I see stuff like that, I know this team has some motor, has some gas in the motor. So let's say this. And keep in mind, even though I believe Golden State has holes, let me be clear here. I thought the San Antonio Spurs were going to win the West, right? I don't know what happened in their game six against the Clippers, right? Even though I believe personally Golden State has some holes. I'll agree Golden State has the upper hand right now. They're up two games to none in the series. Let's be clear on that. If you have money on Golden State, right? And I bet on a lot of teams. Even I have a stake on Golden State that's a few months old. If you have money on Golden State, then you have to, in my opinion, hedge the play right here. Because the casinos foolishly are giving you not 10 to 1, not 20 to 1. They're giving you 25 to 1 odds on the Houston Rockets to win the whole thing. 25 to 1 odds. Folks, the Rockets lost the last game by one point. If the Rockets win game three, you're never getting the 25 to 1 offer ever again. Right? Ever again. And let's be clear here, too. Steph Curry, hey, he's the MVP. Hey, he looks like a superstar. He's not LeBron James. He's not Anthony Davis. Right? There's going to be a game where Steph Curry can't hit six threes. There's going to be a game where they have the perimeter guarded. Right? He's not LeBron. Understand, the guy who led the Warriors in assists in game two was Draymond Green with seven. Right? Steph Curry does a lot of things very well. Don't get me wrong. This is rarefied air for him, right? LeBron, in the NBA Finals, let me just say this. When LeBron walks into the hotel where the team is staying for the NBA Finals, I'm sure the person behind the desk says, oh, you here again? Right? Steph Curry's not that kind of superstar. He doesn't have the experience of a LeBron James. He's not the triple-double threat of LeBron James. He's the biggest star on the Golden State Warriors. Let's be clear too. Look, Steve Kerr has done a masterful job. No question about it. Now I personally had my biggest stake on the Spurs to win the Western Conference. With all due respect to Steve Kerr, I would take Greg Popovich over him just as a coach seven days a week. Right? Understand the Warriors are untested. 
the odds being thrown around here Houston 25 to 1 underdog right those odds suggest that the Rockets are playing Bird McHale and Parrish right Jordan Pippen and Rodman they're not right they're playing Clay Thompson Andrew Bogan Steph Curry so all I'm saying is this and I know the Rockets are down two games to none it's hard for playoff teams to win right you know four out of five games which is what the Rockets would have to do I know it's a tall order but they're compensating you they're more than compensating you they're giving you 25 to 1 on the Rockets to win the whole thing let me say this too and I don't say it lightly understand if the Rockets were to come back and win this series right let's say you have 10 bucks on the Rockets at 25 to 1 to win the whole thing right just 10 bucks to win 250 that's how ridiculous the odds are if the Rockets come back and beat Golden State understand you're deep in the money at that point whoever comes out of the East you could say what the hell I'm looking at a possible 230 uh, excuse me 200 and fifty dollar profit so why don't I throw thirty dollars on the other team why don't I throw fifty dollars on the other team why don't I throw a hundred dollars on the other team why don't I hedge the play here so I'm making money whoever wins right understand when it's down to the final four and you get this much leverage on a win it all bet right just understand that if your team just makes the finals you've made money because you have an easy opportunity to hedge the play and split the profit right so Houston here with 25 to 1 that's a gift folks I'll agree if Golden State wins game 3 the series is practically over right let's be real if Golden State wins game 3 the series is over but if the Rockets win game three, you're in play. If the Rockets win game four, both games are in Houston, then the series is tied. Then it becomes a best of three. Didn't this Rocket team win three of the last four games against the Clippers? When you look at this Rocket team, aren't you concerned that Trevor Reese has been in the NBA Finals before? that James Harden has been in the NBA Finals before that Dwight Howard has been in the NBA Finals before that Jason Terry has been in the NBA Finals before that Corey Brewer has won two NCAA championships these are the dudes who quite frankly are bringing it aren't you also concerned as you watch James Harden against the Warriors that the Warriors through eight quarters of basketball have no clue on how to stop this guy none whatsoever right so I understand this is likely a losing bet it's a hedge play my point is simply 25 to 1 sign me up right the time to get value is when the team's unpopular it's when people are ignoring a one-point loss one-point loss and they're somehow giving you outsized odds right if Houston just swings the outcome by two points they win game three right there isn't that much work to do also aren't some guys on Golden State missing in action hasn't Houston shut down Clay Thompson already in the series right you saw the playoff atmosphere forget the regular season you saw the playoff atmosphere in Houston for game seven of their series against the Clippers you saw how at halftime of that game seven Houston was up by 10 points you saw the crowd had the teams back you don't think for game three Rocket fans aren't going to be out in force 
Understand, Golden State isn't a throw it into the low post type team. These are guys trying to hit three point shots to stay in games. You're telling me some of these long range shooters aren't going to be a bit intimidated by the playoff atmosphere on the road from the Houston Rockets? Right? It's different if I have a Kareem or a Shaq and I can throw it into the low post and he's taking two foot shots all night. You know the Warriors aren't about two point shots. Right? Let me also point out the obvious. If it becomes a three point shooting contest, pay attention to Jason Terry and Trevor Ariza. Can't they hit threes? So look, I know I've been bad mouthing Houston. I'm not here to say I think Houston is the strongest team in the world. I wouldn't take this bet if it were offered at 8 to 1. Man, it's offered at 25 to 1. As I've said before, sign me up. It's too much value to leave on the board. In my opinion, the Houston Rockets down 0 2 against the Golden State Warriors at 25 to 1 to win it all is a losing bet to make. I want this bet. And hell, it's already part of my betting portfolio. I think you should give it a look. I think you should also look closely at the box score from Game 2. Just ask yourself, did Golden State stop James Harden at all? Did they stop Dwight Howard on the boards? Does Houston have a lot of heart? Think about those three questions as you consider whether or not to take 25 to 1 odds on a team that has yet to play a home game in the series. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments in the comment section to this video. Thanks for stopping by.